Right, well, good afternoon everybody, and welcome to the plot. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, what I want to try and do this week is uh, maybe sometimes to get on the coast and uh, gather some seaweed up. Um, of course, seaweed being a fantastic, uh, fantastic fertiliser for all sorts of fruit and flowers, and uh, you can, uh, with some of the compost that you make up, you can get some fantastic results like this. Uh, this basket was made up of 50-50 um, multi-purpose compost and 50% of my own compost that I get out of the compost bins. Now, a lot of people are asking how I make up my compost bins, so when I get a, get a load of seaweed towards the end of this week, I'll get myself down to the coast and I'll show you our coastline. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll, make, I'll, I'll do the mix as I make it up. Uh, it's a, it's a four-part it's a four part mix. It's all your green manures, it's all your horse manure. It's the seaweed, and of course it's all your brown manures, uh, or brown compost that come from the house. I uh, your uh, your titty peelings, your eggshells, paper, cardboard, tea bags, coffee grounds, anything like that. You'd be really surprised at how much stuff gets thrown out your own house, and which you can use to compost stone and to make a fantastic food. And of course it's free, and that's what it's all about. It's making a good, making good use of your waste that's come out of the house, and uh, reusing it to go back in your garden or back in your plants. Um, as you can see by now, I'm, uh, I'm sitting just sit, sitting outside my little 6x6 greenhouse at home and uh, I'm going to get cracking on this um, on this video because it's all about fruit, this one. Uh, now I did get a mention, a couple of mentions the other night, who were on about the melons and uh, a couple of lads were getting poor pollination with melons. Well, as you can see, this is my greenhouse here and, uh, and of course outside the greenhouses I've always got a, uh, a good supply of flowers and out here I've got my lilies, my uh, dwarf lilies and they're doing absolutely fantastic and of course a flower basket which is never short of marigolds I think they're the most uh, fantastic flower especially for getting in your um, your half flies and your, your, poll your pollinating insects and uh, that's, that's what it's all about and of course if you remember on a couple of videos away I'm, uh, I must apologise because I've got a handheld um, apparatus on the day I'm not using the uh, I'm not using the uh, the standard one that I normally do because the sun's high in the sky and I think it'll, it'll have a, an adverse effect on the uh, on the stereo. But uh, as you can see, these are the um, the Charleston grey melons that I was talking about, and they're growing absolutely fantastic. Now, the, if you you look on your melon plants or your your melon trusses, you'll see that the um, the female flowers are outnumbered. Uh, oh, it's a good ten to one by the male flowers. Um, judging by the, some of these trusses, but um, as I say, the male flowers, plenty of them on, and then if you come farther down and you get a, you get a female one, which of course there's a little noggin on the end, which is being pollinated, uh, you'll always get a little immature fruit on the end of the female plant, and of course I've got some uh, some wise comments on uh, how to pollinate them. Well, the, um, if you haven't got enough insects in the greenhouse, and the easiest way to pollinate these, of course, is to uh, just uh, pluck off a male flower and insert it in the female flower. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can always get a, a little brush, a, a little paint brush, and just, um, once again, dab in your male flower and then insert it in the female flower. And uh, that way you're sure of uh, helping it along with a bit of pollination. I'm just moving these around, and uh, once again, there, there we have it there. We've got a nice little female there. It looks like it's been pollinated um, and it's, uh, there's a fruit set on it. I'm over the moon with these. Once again, it's the first time I've grown these this year. So I'm, um, and that's one over the back there. It's, uh, it's doing really well. As I say, these are the Charleston Grey. Uh, I'm surmising they're from the deep south in America. Um, of course, Charleston being down there. And I'm sure with the, the nice hot weather that they have down there, they'd be able to grow them quite easy outside. But I thought this year we're not putting tomatoes in this in this summer house. I've got a I've got a mountain of them up the um, up on the plot. I thought I'd experiment and try a couple of melons. But um, at the moment they're growing really well. I'm pleased with them. Um, I've got, I've got a, quite a few fruits setting on them. If I go through the different the uh, different runners and that, I can see little bits and pieces uh, coming on. So no doubt we'll get there. Uh, we'll get a nice crop out of them. Uh, what I, what I like to do is to keep the spray in here. Nice cool water in the rainy evening. I like to give them a spray. Um, I water them every day because uh, the heat we're having up here in the northeast is absolutely fantastic. And the temperature in here, it, with the door and the window wide open, it's 99, 98. God, that's, that's hot. But uh, yeah, always keep, a, 
I always keep a bucket of water, of um, a watering can full of water in here, so it stays at the same temperature as the greenhouse, and uh, you should have a cotton crop. Now the melons I've got up the garden is completely different. I'll show you them in the next part of the video. I've got the Malaga melons. Uh, we've got quite a few sitting on them. Very nice. Uh, we've got pumpkins. We've got squashes. We've got cucumbers. And they're all grown just as well because they're all the same family and they're all adapt to the same way you would to grow them. Uh, what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to be cutting a few of the runners off tomorrow because um, there is quite a few of them on and they're starting to get a bit... Uh, a bit thick now, so what I'll do is I'll go down and take some of the side shoots off, like say that one there, that's just a side shoot coming away from it there, I'll nip that one out. I don't think there's any any female plants on there, I think they're all male, so that's a that's the one I can just nip out, no problem, and of course it gives any any damage to the diseased ones, you can just go in amongst them, sharp paces as, and just cut them out, but that's what I'll be doing tomorrow, certainly not today because it's absolutely big and hot in here. I'm red hot, and what I want to do is get myself outside now. Uh, as you see, I've got a little, little handheld uh, device today, just for showing you around, and uh, there's my basket. It's, uh, the fuchsias are starting to make it come back again, after they were trampled down by the uh, by the pigeons. I was a bit disappointed in that, because I, I wanted them looking really nice, but uh, they're coming back anyway. Yes, well chuffed for that. So, this is the first part of the video, as I say. Um, we're going to get us our way down the coast. Now we'll get ourselves over the back here, yeah, where my compost bins are. You should be able to see them over the back here. And uh, we'll start making some uh, some lovely compost. Uh, as I say, it's a, it's a nice cool spot that. I've got some uh, builder's bags and I've got some uh, some compost bins. Now the uh, the method I use for both is exactly the same. Uh, what it really is is keeping the compost um, moist, not wet which I'll explain when I'm filling the bags up. Um, what I have got on top of the builder's bags is a, is a big piece of carpet which keeps out any excess rain because what I do want the compost to do is it gets saturated. Um, as I said in my last video, I do add a, a barrel of water to each, each level of mixture as I build it up and that just keeps it nice and moist. And the idea of the carpet on top is to keep the heat in. If you've got a bin and you've got your lids on your bins, that's that's a perfect solution. Keep your lids on, it keeps that heat in and of course it helps with the composting and the, uh, as I say, the rotten down of the material twice as fast as what you will with an open with an open bin. But uh, we'll get stuck into all that there um, pretty soon. See, I'm hoping to get on the coast soon and get a get a load of seaweed. Um, and then we'll get. I'll show you how I make my mixes up and uh, what I'll be using them for. What you can use seaweed for, of course, is just put it in a barrel. Um, and as you add it, it, it'll rot down. Just keep a bit of weight on it, a few bricks on it. Just keep adding more and more and more to it, and what it will do is it'll just turn it to juice. If you've got a tap on the bottom of the barrel, that's fine. Open your tap and you'll find you get a nice black juice running out of it, and of course then you can add it to your, um, your tomatoes, anything like that. You know, on a ratio of around about 5 to 1 or 10 to 1. It depends on the on the, the strength of the juice. But uh, yeah, seaweed's a great fertiliser, and if, if you're like me, you live near the coast. I'm about 3 or 4 miles away from it, but there. Uh, no doubt. I'll jump on a bus, get me bar out, I'll get me little me shopping trolley out, and I can go down there and I can get a good three bags in the shopping trolley, which I'll do me for a if I do that once a week I'm over the moon. And it just adds that little bit extra good strong composting for your bins. And as I say, by next year when it's all rotted down, it's all mixed together, you've got a fantastic mix to add towards your uh, towards your ceilings or for your potting off. As you know, I I use it ninety percent in all my potting, my own compost. And of course, I always, whatever's left over goes for a good mulch you know, on some of the pots, croissants, dahlias, etc. So, yeah, we'll be getting stuck in that soon. But um, I'm going to knock off for the time being, and then we'll get ourselves away and pick up some seaweed, okay? So, I'll see you all again on the plot soon. Right, well, here we are. Managed to get up the plot. Uh, it's just starting to cool down a little bit. Not too much. It's actually 104 in the melon house here. It's, uh, I won't most of the windows because, uh, as I say, once it comes here, it gets really hot in here. But um, if you can see this one, push them back over there. This is the kind of crop we like, and uh, absolutely fantastic. Now this is a different uh, melon. This is melon Malaga. Um, you can't grow this on the bed. Um, what I've done outside there when I've
chopped the tomatoes down from the from the middle of the stem. I've cut all the, the seed branches off, trimmed up the trusses, and there's left plenty of light. So what I've done, I've went along and I put a dozen extra Malaga plants that I had spare, and I've laid them in amongst the tomatoes. Um, what I normally do this time of year, I've normally put a mulch of leaves down. Well rotted leaves off last year, but fortunately, you know the problem with it's been poor last year. I never got around to collecting as much as what I like to. Um, so what I've done is here, I've put the melons down, exactly what I've done with the three sisters next door. Um, the only difference here, I've got the um, the honey boat, or the, sorry, the uh, the little um, watermelons, the baby bush, they're in there. And the Malaga melons, now I've had them grown on here, there's not too much um, foliage. It's just nice, there's quite a few melons along the back end here. And they're just starting to come lightning. So I'm hoping I'm going to have to support this one a little bit on the box because it is getting quite heavy. What I normally do is I normally go along with a few nets and some strings and just give them an extra support. But then um, I've put a couple of leaves under there and it's just hanging on that box. So I'm quite happy with that. What I'll do is later on I'll get a little bit of net, some sort of a system. Now these again are fed exactly the same way. Um, in the boxes is the multi-purpose compost and my own homemade compost. Plenty of that. Plenty of manure in it, yeah. plenty of leaf mould, plenty of seaweed, all mixed in, rotted down, and it's a really fantastic mixture. Fill the boxes up, we'll pop the melons in, one box, one melon or a box, that's all we need. Spread them along here, and uh, it's a fantastic crop we'll get from here. Um, I'll take you next door, as I say, I'm over the moon with the cucumbers. Um, we've got two or three different types of cucumbers up there, they come along well. Um, all these are all in the same family, and I treat everyone exactly the same. Plenty of water, plenty of feed. Uh, they can take all the feed you want. They've had nothing um, chemical-wise on them since we started. Um, if they do get a little bit um, thrown when they're in the pots, I can give a little bit of nitro, a little bit of nettle feed, or a little bit of newer juice until they get actually get in the compost. And once they're in the compost, they start galloping away. Now once again, once they're in the compost, um, if you haven't got any nettle juice um, earlier on, or um, manure tea, like Afron, or the comfrey, and then you can just switch to a normal tomato feed, um, a tomato liquid in the bottom, and that's quite sufficient for feeding them. But uh, you know what we like to use, uh, we've knocked the nettle juice on the head, that's going at the onions and the leaves now, and of course the comfrey tea, and the, um, the horse manure is now coming on to replace that. The melons, the cucumbers, the squashes, and all that. They're all getting a weekly feed of that. Good good drink of that. And uh, it'll boost them to no end. So I'll, uh, I'm going to stick the camera on my trusty handheld one again. Hopefully I haven't got the shakes. And uh, I'll take you up and I'll show you how the cucumbers are getting on. One last job I want to do the night before I go down is um, I want to show you how we're getting on with the grapes. Um, I've still got a few vines left. I'm going to send them out to different people. I've sent a few already. Um, I've planted my two black ones because out of the four that I, I planted at the beginning of the year, the canes, I've got three out of four. So I've planted two and I've got one spare. I might stick them in the top greenhouse, I don't know yet. I'll see how it grows. But uh, the way they're growing, it's going to look like a very vigorous grow compared to my, my yellow grape that's in the bottom tunnel. So I'm, um, I've got two grown at the bottom end there. And what I've done, with some of the yellow grape vine cuttings that I've took, I've left one in a pot, especially for it, and I'm going to take it home. But what I want to do with that is to pot it up and I want to pot train it. So if any of you have got grape vines and you're not sure if, uh, how to go about it, I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, but we'll go up and see how these cucumbers are getting on in the top uh, in the top greenhouse, okay? Right, well, before we pop up, um, as promised on the grapevine, um, I've been cutting a couple of bunches. I've managed to get a couple done, not not many, um, but I can still see um, grapes in between there. That's just starting to pop on there, little immature grapes. And what I like to do is just to go in there with the paste does, and I can actually get if you can get your th finger and thumb, there, you, can, you can just rub them off. Uh, it doesn't do any harm to the, to the vine. As I say, there's some, there's some nice grapes coming on there. There's still an awkward bunch hanging here and there. I'm going to have to cut a few of them off. But uh, on the whole, I'm, I'm really pleased with them. That's a bunch I did uh, a couple of weeks ago if I did, when I showed you the video. And look at how they have fattened out. Absolutely fantastic. Once again, on the bottom there, there's still one or two that I've missed. 
but it's just a case of just taking your time, you know, when you've got five minutes spare, which you never seem to have in the garden, is just take your time and just uh, go through the bunch, turn them, uh, and you're not happy with, just pop them off, cut them out, uh, leave a little bit of distance between your other grapes, and you'll, you'll end up with a fantastic bunch. Um, as I say, it's, uh, it's all about fruit, this, um, this video. I'm over the moon with that. The, the vine's just going berserk over there. Uh, that's the only part I haven't tackled yet because, as I say, I'm not allowed to climb. Um, so I'm just going to leave that for the time being. And in a couple of weeks' time, when I get me when I get my legs back to square one, I'm going to uh, I'm going to get up there and cut that back. But this is the uh, this is the actual vine itself. It's uh, it must be about 30 foot long now, running around. Uh, I've had this for quite a few years, and uh, I'm, I take cuttings off it every year. But uh, I'm well pleased with it. Uh, if you remember the pumpkin seed that I saved from last year. Um, from the grandson after um, after Halloween, he, uh, he he gives a few seeds from his pumpkin. And I says, "Oh, give him a try." Well, there we are, absolutely fantastic. I'm over the moon with that. It's a lo lovely pumpkin. I'm making it some nice soups with that, and I've got a couple of nice ones over in a far corner, just there, uh, just popping out there. But yeah, on the whole, over the moon. As I says, me uh, the grapevine cuttings. This is one of the black ones that I rooted. Um, I've got a couple more that I've planted out, but I'm just going to hang on to that one. And this is another one of them, but unfortunately it didn't it didn't um, send any new buds up. But I'm just going to leave it, because sometimes what happens in the bottom, the root first before they send anything on the top. And I'm hoping that we'll get a green shoot coming through there. But three out of four is not bad. I'm over the moon with that. I'm just going to keep that one handy and see how the other two perform. But these are the black grape, black Hamburg. Uh, and that's a, that's a first year cutting over the moon with that. But uh, we'll pop in next door and we'll see how, what's happening through there. Right, well, here we are on the top of the uh, 100 foot greenhouse. We have put uh, quite a few of the cucumbers uh, over the moon with them. And of course, this is the old crystal, and I've grown these quite a few times over the last few years. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't like them, but. Um, I think they're a bit of a novelty, and uh, you get a quite a, quite a good crop from them. A nice little cucumbers, round like uh, like little balls of lemon. And uh, if you want to grow cucumber, and you, you you have problems growing cucumbers, well try this one. This is crystal lemon. It's a really easy one to grow. Uh, it can get out of hand if you don't uh, if you don't keep an eye on it. It can get uh, a bit out of uh, out of control. But as I say, I haven't had much time to spend on this here. Uh, not as much as what I'd like, but um, we'll get there. And of course, there's this couple of beautiful cucumbers on there. Absolutely marvellous. First class, Sam. Um, I'm really pleased with them. And of course, there again, the crystal lemon hiding in the corner there. I'm going to take a couple of them off tonight because we'll have a lovely salad with them tomorrow. Really pleased with them. Yep. Cucumbers doing really well. Kind of complain all around. A few nice ones down here. They have been left to grow a little bit while this year because I haven't had much time to spend on them. There's some, actually, some really nice ones, and they need to be coming off now because they're uh, they're getting to the stage now where they're starting to turn a little bit yellow. I like to get them off long before then when they're nice and dark green. But uh, yeah, I'm over the moon with them. As I say, these um, the melons, marrows, they're all in the same family. It, um, what I've done this way is I've done it with the ring culture. Uh, grew them in the pots and then placed the pots into the grow bag. Normally I would just put them in big black pots and grow them on in there. If you can grow, if you've got space to put them in the beds, then uh, they'll grow fantastic, no problem. Uh, the put in the squash, unfortunately, we had, uh, we had to decimate that because it was just going berserk. Uh, I'm glad I didn't put it in with the three sisters because I would have had a lot of problems with that. And this is supposed to be a smaller variety. As I say, I put it in here to try it out to see what it was like and I'm I've been spot on. It, uh, it was absolutely massive. There was leaders and runners shooting away all over. We've had a cut it right back, so I'm hoping still for a few fruits in the middle. Um, but as I say, I've had a really chop it back because it was interfering with the tomatoes. And of course, a lot of these tomatoes on here are the ones that have been sent up. Um, oh, that's one of mine. That's a large orange, that one. Uh, so I'm moving, moving that. Some fantastic tomatoes on that. I've got the different varieties all the way down. I've got them all there, uh, all named. So. On the whole, I'm really pleased with where they're going, but um, I'll pop down to the bottom tunnel now and we'll have a look at these grapevines. Right, well, here we are in the, um, the top of the polytunnel. Um, what I've just done in the, 
in the tank here. There's another bag full of nettles here. Whenever I get a chance, uh, I just bring a polythene bag up, put a handful of nettles, and stick them in the tub. And of course, the water's running at the moment to fill the tub back up again. And then we've got a good supply of horse manure for the tomatoes and whatever any else is, is lying around. Now, just as you see, I've just put a load of melons in here. So they, they'll love the, uh, the horse manure and they'll, they'll, say they'll, they'll quickly cover this bottom canopy here. And what I did at the beginning of uh, last week is the, the grape beans that I took it in the January of this year, from remember, I've got uh, four cuttings off one of my friends, uh, Black Hamburg, and just 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 sticks of wood, just um, bits of rod, and I managed to root four out of three, which was over the moon, and uh, that's the height there right now. I'm absolutely over the moon. I've got one here and one in each corner. What I intend to do is to let them grow at the top here and then let them travel right along the full length of the tunnel there and along the back the full length there and then we can let the arms uh, drape down and we'll cut the uh, we'll let the fruits grow on each arm just a single single cone right way along the, the, full, the full length of the tunnel and we should get some uh, we should get some fantastic grapes on it but uh, as I say this this will grow really well I'm, uh, I'm over the moon with this I've got one spare in there, so I'm, uh, I'm keeping an eye on that to see how that does. And I might find another spot to plant that. What I have managed to do, uh, if you remember with my cuttings that I took, I'll show you how to take the cuttings off to you. Um, I've sent quite a few out, um, and I've still got a couple left here. I've got one there, one there. They're just a little bit dry. I'm going to give them a good drink of water. And of course, this one here, it's fantastic. It's really shooting away. So what I'm going to do with this, if um, if you're not sure about where to put your vine or what where to grow it, I'm going to show you how to, how you can grow a pot vine. So it's just a single stem, a cordon, and it will grow it in a nice big pot, a uh, black flower bucket. Be perfect. Uh, a little bit of training each year uh, with the pruners. It's quite an easy job to prune a grapevine pot. Um, just let it grow on a single cordon stem with a couple of side branches coming off and them side branches will supply you with your food. Now if you're growing it in a pot you should be able to manage five, six bunches on each vine. N not a problem. The beauty of them with being in the pot you can take them inside in the winter once they die completely back. And you cut your vine back to where you want your single stem again. They'll die right back and then you can put it in, if you haven't got a greenhouse, and you can put it in a nice sheltered spot in the corner of the garden up against the south facing fence or somewhere like that. Maybe it's a little bit of fleece on it, it'll, uh, it'll see the winter through no problem. But what I'll do in the next video, I'll, we'll get this vine and we'll, uh, we'll make up a good compost. Uh, it'll be mainly made up of the old compost, homemade compost again. And uh, plenty of sharp sand because they love free draining um, soil use. They don't like to be waterlogged. Although they like plenty of water, they don't like to be waterlogged. So we'll make a nice free draining mixture. We'll, uh, we'll get this grapevine planted into a pot and I'll show you how to put a little bit of trellis work, which is quite easy to make. Put a little bit of trellis work up and then you can grow a uh, uh, couple of hands of fair uh, grapes in, in a small block. Not a hard job to do, but it's, uh, as I say, if you're short of space or you haven't got a greenhouse, so this is where we'll do it. We'll, uh, we'll set the vine away in a pot and it'll be, it'll be quite an easy job. But it should be fun for next year, at least we can shift it around the garden and uh, move it there uh, into the south facing sun or into the shade wherever we want it but uh, that's what we'll do in the next video we'll, uh, we'll get that thing put it up and I'll be over the moon with that but uh, yeah for the, for the time being I'm uh, I'm really pleased with where things are going uh, my tomatoes are really they're cropping well now they're Spanish um, we've got quite a few up the top end there uh, starting to ripen up some American ones with the pink blush ones so yeah, everything's growing well, and as I say, the cucumbers, the, uh, the marrows, the squashes, they're all doing well. And of course the vines, well, I'm over the moon with them, but it's you know all about fruit. Uh, the last thing I want to show you, before we do this, is the the, um, the strawberries. And that's of course at the top end of the garden. Right, well here we are once again, get myself outside. It's a lot cooler out here than where it is inside them tunnels. It's absolutely baking in there. And of course, we'll finish off last, last week. And uh, we'll the fanzies in and the polyanthus. No, but that's start again this week. 
So on the next video, hopefully we'll get uh, we'll get the rest of the seeds sown. We've got plenty of packets to put in. Delphiniums to go in. Um, we've got wallflowers to go in. The wallflowers will go outside in the garden. Delphiniums will go in the tree, and we'll uh, we'll get them sown. But we'll have to get started on these, and that's it. That's a must for next week. And in the next video, we're going to start with the strawberries because that's a, a corker of a plant. Oh, and it's beautiful. It's got some nice runners on it. We'll remove that. So what I might do with that, I might start giving them a light feed now, because I've had nothing for they've been sitting on this back bed throughout the summer. So I've had absolutely nothing, no feed whatsoever. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start and give it a couple of light feeds of, uh, of nettle juice, a little bit of nitrogen in it, and it's going to clump up these, uh, these side shoots, give them a nice dark green. There's plenty on them, all I want is space them out, but I'll show you that in the next video, how I space them out, and how I like to get my runners picked up. That's another nice one there, that's Colossus. Not so many runners on that, but I think I'll get one, two, three, four. I might end up with a half a dozen of the Colossus. They're a massive one, and of course. We've got the grapevine outside now. I'm bringing out the polytunnel because I want to start and introduce it to a bit of fresh air. It's, uh, it's an absolute marvel. I'm going to just pop it on here because there's a bit of cover there. Uh, we'll focus for some heavy gear, heavy winds tonight, some thundery showers. So I'm just going to pop it under there. It's going to get a little bit of cover. I'll give it a good soaking now, as well as these strawberries. Give them a little drink, of, a little feed of nettle juice, and they'll be uh, they'll be over the moon. But as for the grapevine, I'm going to give that uh, same thing. I'm going to give it a good soak, and I'll give that a little bit of uh, nettle, ju nettle juice too. And then what we'll do in the next video, we'll uh, we'll pot this off, and we'll get started on the strawberries. Uh, in the meantime, I want to get on the fish key. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, I was talking about it on my Facebook page. I'll get my trolley down, and get we'll get on with some seaweed, and I'll show you how I make the me, um, me compost up. Quite an easy job to do. If you've got everything at hand, you can just mix it week by week by week, and I promise you, at the end of the year, you're going to have a fantastic uh, bin load of um, really good first-class homemade compost. And that's, that's what this is all about. It's feeding, feeding your plants. Your fruits love it. Uh, I know it's a, a, lot, a lot of work at times, but um, you know, if you just keep them, um, you just keep plodding on, plodding on. I mean, I'm just going along here, hand picking, and already I've got a half dozen of absolutely corkers, raspberries. It's absolutely marvellous. But it's all about feeding your fruit, looking after them, pruning, giving them the best advantage you've got, and I tell you what, it is, it'll reward you for years, no, no problem. So when I finish these off, which will not take long, get them sitting away down home, get this video online, and uh, hope you enjoy. Just a few tips for you. As I say in the next video, crack all the strawberries, we'll start taking some runners, I'll feed them the night before I go, and we'll get this grapevine potted up, and I'll show you how to how you can grow yourself a nice grapevine in the back garden of your home, in a nice big pot, and you can just shift it around wherever you want it, throughout the summer and the winter months. And uh, as I say, with a, with a pot grown grapevine, you should be able to manage five or six bunches, and it's great for, um, it's great for, um, for when you get family and friends around and you've got a, uh, you've got a nice grapevine sitting on the table there, full of bunches of grapes. Great topic to talk about, but uh, I'll show you all that in the next video. Okay, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing, and I say, uh, keep on there, uh, keep on liking, and uh, we'll be over the moon. As I say, we've got uh, quite a few new subscribers coming on, so over the moon with that. Just uh, just keep watching, as I say, and keep sharing, and we'll be we'll be uh, over the moon. But for the time being, I'm gonna get on, get this video online, and then I'll see you all next week, and we'll get started on these strawberry cuttings. Okay, bye for now.